This is Uni. Welcome to the Unique Paradigms podcast. Thank you for joining me for our discussion. When I first started the journey into podcasting various topics, including my research, I made a promise to always give back to the community and extend educational research and media to support social awareness and issues that are in our communities, both domestic and abroad. Over the last few months, my aspirations of improving mindfulness, intentional thinking, and diversity has immersed in the Caribbean community, specifically in my birthplace of Guyana. These endeavors are meaningful to me for the reasons that my own personal identity is deeply connected and influenced from our culture, our traditions. And there is a continued desire to unify our people and the country to the rest of the Caribbean. At the same time, I do wish to bring more social awareness to the issues that are impacting our communities. So as I do continue my journey shifting paradigms, I come across patterns of resistance often especially when we're concerning international topics of equity, human rights. So this isn't intended to be a political discussion, but it is a call for creators among us and leaders to collectively create a liaison, collaborate, to empower and support our communities. Through social awareness and activism, When we are looking at the process of shifting paradigms, it does create an environment that is more inclusive, that is equitable, and it does promote a stronger sense of resilience. Though we do need to address topics of patriarchy, colorism, and racial inequity that exists in our community. So when we are assessing our role or the role of perception in shaping the realities of our family, especially after immigration, we will discover that there are intergenerational gaps that are going to be influential in shaping our identity. But there are other issues as we are going through this assessment process where we will also find patterns of economic disparity that does limit individuals from having equal access to pathways such as higher education, mental health resources, and even healthcare access. So as we globalize, the demands increase as for people and also processes to adapt. So throughout all of our media channels, I've seen very little shared from other content creators about what is happening in our country and how a population of just under 780,000 people, you know, according to United Nations data, is, is going through a period where social movement and activism is really being challenged both by people in the community as well as you know from the political parties as well so i think we there are certainly other correlations that can be measured as far as you know what is actually hindering these processes from growing however there are established connections when we think about poverty and self-concept so when we are thinking about poverty specifically and how that poses an emotional and social challenge. So the perception of poverty does influence the image of your behavior. And considering one aspect of education, just academic performance, that can be significant. So the access to education 
beyond high school in the Caribbean, it doesn't necessarily prove, present an opportunity and equitable process for younger generations. And there are systemic issues that do exist in the Caribbean specifically and in Guyana. So we do have yet to create a social movement to begin the change process in these areas. So the country specifically is going through unprecedented economic growth. So there are going to be factors that are going to impact the social and also the political landscape of the country. But the political tensions of Guyana has become a greater area of interest because we do have a country that has dominant resources. So we have one aspect where we have an East Indian ancestry and African ancestry are the most dominant races. But sadly, these tensions have existed for centuries. When we are thinking about intergenerational gaps that exist in the country, and when we're thinking about economic growth and globalization and the influence to the change process. So specifically, there are relationships between the interaction and family interaction patterns and how there are coping strategies when we're thinking about cultural transition processes. So when we are thinking about something that we think as just a basic empowerment process, that can be very much challenged if there isn't an environment that culture that cultivates those interaction patterns to support that transition process. So the exposure to these values of empowerment and having a social support is very important, which is why I wanted to bring these topics to light and to bring more more awareness to areas of one, the perceived obligations of our own role to the family, our social support, how that is influenced by our culture and how that also is a very important part of how we do have a social responsibility as part of retaining our culture and having a strong community to collectively share this goal of improving the perceptions and behaviors that exist in our community and hopefully build a environment that does cultivate entrepreneurship, bringing growth, bringing future health initiatives, education. So there are overwhelming opportunities that we can think of that do bring forth the the realities that we do see in our environment. So when we are thinking about the ways we can influence our community, my purpose in sharing this is not just to celebrate and unify us through culture, but also to use my platform to bring attention to social injustice and human rights needs that exist and how we can start to implement an action plan or a strategy to bring forth a social movement and advocacy in our own community and beyond Guyana throughout the Caribbean and for listeners that have reached out beyond the United States. So there are certainly other cultures and environments where the message is uniform, where the actions that can be taken maybe are a little bit more risk oriented because of the the really volatile environments that some of my listeners do list do live in. But there are ways that we can still find power within ourselves to find our voice, to improve our self-perceptions, our intentional thinking. So there is a concern and what's been deeply troubling is how much resistance I've come across. And much of the messaging has been regarding political 
parties accepting responsibility or really blaming one another. And what is very much a desire is emphasizing that this is a non-governmental process. This is a collective process where we can mold a pathway for social change and justice. So I will continue to support our community through social activism and scholarly research. But my request is for our community of creators, philanthropists, leaders, educators, and all Caribbeans to stand with us as we bring attention to much needed social change. We will break barriers, my friends. Thank you for listening. Talk to you all soon.